Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for FloatTheTurn.com, and today I'm going to be explaining to you exactly how I take notes at the live poker table and how I actually go through the process of writing notes and then later going through notes. So, first off, I wanted to show you guys the kind of notebook I use. This is it laid out flat. Um, it is a 5.5 inch by 4, and a half, by 4 inch notebook. I get it at CVS Pharmacy or Walgreens or somewhere like that. I think it costs maybe five bucks. It has 180 sheets, which is good. You want to make sure you get a book with a lot of sheets. And I've actually found that this size is perfect because it can sit right on the rail if you want to keep it there. I usually put mine under one of my legs whenever I'm sitting at the poker table. It allows for easy grabbing right after hand. And um, I also prefer the spiral bound notebooks because you can put a pen right in that little spiral binder right here. I have a nice little you know, a little pen you can put in. I prefer the click pens where you, you know, click the top and then that makes the pen part come down. So that is the kind of notebook I use. Here's another view of the back. As you see, 180 sheets, 5.5 inches by 4 inches. This is the perfect size to write a hand, at least for me. And they're fairly cheap. Make sure you get 180 pages. 40. A lot. Of, I think there are some books out there with something like 45 pages, but those are pretty useless. You'll go through that very quickly. All right, so here's a picture of a random page in my book. What I do whenever I get my book is I go through it and I write these four letters at the top of all the pages. You don't have to do it ahead, completely ahead of time, but I always make sure that I have at least 10 or 15 pages written ahead of time so that I can already know to be thinking about these things and also so that I, it's one less thing I have to write when I'm actually writing down the complete hand. I think what a lot of players do when they try to write notes is they just start with a blank piece of paper and try to remember everything. But I've found that by writing these four things at the top of each page, it really helps me remember what is actually going on in each hand. So at the top of the page, I have H at the top left. This stands for hand. Then there's a little space. That's where I'm going to write my hand. Then I have S, which stands for stack. That's going to be my stack. If there are other stack sizes, I will note those usually in the text. Uh, B is the blinds. I'll put the blinds right there. And P is my position. So HSBP goes at the top of every page. I have been told by some of my students that they also have trouble remembering to write down the action of a particular street. So what they actually do is they write preflop, flop, turn, and river down the side. So they'll write the preflop action right around here, then they'll write the flop, and then they'll write the flop action, then they'll write the turn, then they'll write the turn action, then river, then river action. I, I don't do it like this, but I just wanted to show you guys how some of my students do it. I guess it's worth noting ahead of time that I do require all of my students, my you know my personal coaching students, to write down a lot of hands because otherwise, especially if you're only playing live poker, you just cannot remember hands accurately. It's just not possible. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, a lot of players think they have really good memories for hands, but you start talking to them and really they're missing all sorts of details. And that's really the reason to write down these hands is because it allows you to get very good, a very good and clear record of what you're actually doing at the poker table. All right, so... At the start of a page, I'll have HSBP written at the top, and you'll also know ahead of time, within reason, what, about what your stack is, and also about what the size of the blinds are. So, you know, say you're playing 50-100 and there are 20 minutes left in the level, you know you're probably going to play another hand between now and the end of the level. So go ahead and write 50-100 there. If, you, if the blinds go up, scribble this out and write 100-200 or 75-150 or whatever it is. And if your stack fluctuates because of the blinds, I usually just uh, put a line through this and say, you know, took the blind sum and then I'll write, you know, 19-5 or whatever. I'm, I'm not a real big stickler on exacts when it comes to the stack size. You know, if, if I have 200 big blinds, that's pretty much the same as 190 or 210. So I, I usually don't write down every single hand. It's like if I raise preflop and everyone folds, I'm not writing that down unless... It's of no, if it's unless it's noteworthy. Like you know, if I have been raising ten times in a row over the course of the last, like say I play twenty hands and I raise ten of them and everyone folds every time, I'll certainly note that because I'll have grinded up fifteen big blinds with no contests and that's worthy, noteworthy because you're going to find that maybe your opponents give you way less credit in the future because of that. But um, and it also if you blind off just because you get total crap cards for thirty minutes or an hour, write that as well. You know, write say card dad. 19.5 or something like that. But this is uh, stuff that you can start to write before you actually even play the hand. And I think that is very relevant. A lot of players don't write anything before they start each hand. And I think that's pretty common sense and clear that you do need to be writing as much information as you know before the hand starts on your page. That way, the actual writing of the hand is a very quick process. 
So now that we have that, this is what a finished hand will look like for the most part. So we see H, Ace of Spades, Ace of Diamonds, stack 20k, blind 50, 100, position second. So second position, I use I use first, second, third, fourth, then I use... Uh, whenever I'm in an early position, I usually just count from early position, so I'm usually first, second, or third. And then when I'm in later position, I count button, cutoff, hijack, low jack. The hijack is a seat to the right of the cutoff. The low jack is a seat to the right of the hijack. So that is um, seven positions plus the small blind and big blind. So that's a nine-handed table. First, second, third, low jack, hijack, cutoff, button, small blind, big blind. So those are what I use for my position, and I know what all of those are. Some people like using under the gun plus two or something like that. That doesn't work for me, but it does work for a lot of people. So do whatever works for you. Um, so this is what I would write. Um, normally what I actually do, to confuse you guys, is whenever I get done with a hand, the hand's over, I'm picking up my chips, I put put up my chips, and as soon as I have a free moment, I write down the flop, the turn, and the river, because that is what I personally forget. I forget if this nine was a nine of, or if I forget, I forget like if this nine of diamonds was a nine of hearts, maybe it was a nine of clubs, who knows, and I try to write that as quickly as I can. It's not too hard to remember the exact board for about 15 seconds, but after that, it starts to get a little bit muddled, at least in my mind. So I write that first, and then I can usually remember the action. And I, and I frequently write the action backwards, because that um, will allow me to remember the more difficult parts of the hand, because usually I can piece together what happened pre-flop. You know, it's not too hard to remember that, oh, I raised it three big blinds pre-flop, because that's what I do when I have 200 big blinds from second position with aces, of course. And I know he didn't three-bet me, so that means he just called. So you can almost piece together the pre-flop action from the post-flop action. But the way this hand would read is it means I raise two. There, I don't have to write raise two because I 300. A lag kid calls button. So what this means is I raise to 300 from second position with pocket aces at 50, 100 with 20,000 stacks. Notice I do not note my opponent's stack. I can like maybe draw a little line and write 10K or 50K or whatever if I felt like it. I usually just note the effective stack size unless we are on some sort of bubble spot or a spot where I need to know the stacks, but whenever you're 200 big blinds deep, if the other guy has 300, it doesn't matter in the least bet. So we both have 200 big blinds. I raise 300, button calls. Flop comes, jack of clubs, nine of hearts, seven of diamonds. I 500, he calls. So that means I bet 500, he calls. Four spades, this is the turn. I 1300, he calls. This means I bet 1300, he calls. Rivers of 10 of diamonds, I check. He bets 3000. I call and beat king of hearts, nine of spades. So, obviously a pretty clean, concise hand. This took me maybe four seconds to write. Because, notice, I'm not writing super pretty or anything. You guys can probably barely read it. I'm just scribbling it down on the page as fast as I can and moving on to actually playing poker. The taking of notes should not be a, a big hassle for you at the poker table. It should be something that's very easy to do. You may end up missing an, some action here or there. But I, I think it's well worth it to actually be able to go back through these things at the end of the day. So you see I have a little bit of room left here and also on the back of this page. If I have any thoughts that I think are noteworthy, I usually write a little bit something at the bottom as well. See, right here I wrote, I thought he would bluff... Um, I thought he would... I can't even read what I wrote. Something to the effect of I thought he would bluff on the river. So, um, you know, write, write that kind of action. Note why you check the river. Note that... I mean, because you certainly could check fold the river on... Jack 10, 9, 7, 4. I mean, the guy could easily have you beat. But, you know, I thought this lag kid would bluff the river, so it seemed like a pretty easy call to me. So definitely take that kind of thing into account. You can also write that on the back of this page. I suggest you do not use the front and the back of each page for actually writing different hands. Um, and the reason for that is because you're going to want to perhaps go back through and tear these hands out of this notebook at some point and make a little compilation of perhaps all of the spots where you got 3-bet or all, of, all the spots where you got four bet or whatever and you can go through those and see how you're performing in those spots very similarly to how you can use a program like hold a manager online to filter when you get three bet or when you three bet or when you're not continuation betting or whatnot and you can go through there and see how those hands play out for you and if you play for say a year then you go through and look at all the spots where you three bet and you see that you're getting demolished that means you probably need to change something it is very worth noting right here that if you play a tournament and you keep track of your hands and you see something that didn't work out for you, don't assume that play is necessarily bad because quite often things do not go well for you. <laughs> um, you're going to find that there is a lot of variance in poker and you, you can't take the super short term to be too relevant. 
Um, what I also suggest, notice this book has a blue cover. If we go back to the front of it. This book has a blue cover. You're, you're going to want the book that comes next in line to be a different color. So what I do whenever I get to the end of the book is I will write on one page, I'll say go to the red book or something like that. And then at the front of each book, I write the date of the book and um, what is played in it, sort of like a table of contents. I think that's a pretty pretty good idea. Also, what I do is say I make day two of a tournament or say you make it to the final table and you want to know ch chip stacks. I usually write something like this. So as you can see, um, these are the seat numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This, these are the seats at the table. So I'm in the one seat. I have 40K, that's me. Second position is... Uh, he's satellited in, seems scared. He has 50k. This guy with 20k, 30 year old random. Then C4, 13k looks wild, 30 year old guy, etc., etc., etc. So I'm just going through and noting my opponents, seeing what I my initial reads are. Um, also, if you use a program, well, I'll say a program. If you use a website like Hendon Mob or something like that to look up your opponents, that is something else you can do. Um, and you can write down maybe how many, how much their caches are, what their name is and all that type of thing, and just figure out who you're against, because that is also very relevant. And you can use that to make your note-taking a little bit easier, at least initially, or whenever you know the not table's not going to change very much. Because whenever you're playing a tournament, it's, it's quite often guys come in and out, because guys bust, guys get moved, etc. But whenever you make it very deep in a tournament, like say you're at a final table, you know the table's not going to change. So you are here, you need to know who has position on you, who doesn't have position on you, and you need to know how to act accordingly. So in this state, final table, for example, we have two guys on my right. These guys, I'm up in seat one, so these guys are on my right over here, who are all somewhat short, and we have a super lag Asian kid, sort of a few seats to the to the right of me. So that is worth noting. We're going to probably have to figure out a way to play against him. And on this side, these guys all seem fairly standard. Now we have a satellite qualifier, a random guy, a guy with almost no chips who looks lag. So it's worth noting. I also write the blinds at the top of the page. I'd also write the date as well, but... I didn't try it this time. So um, that's generally how I go about taking the notes. What I do whenever I get done with the notes is, so say, say you write down all the hands you play throughout a tournament. And when I say the hands you play, I mean the hands where you voluntarily put money in the, in the pot. I don't mean when you raise and everybody folds or when you're in the big blind and everybody, someone raises and you fold. You don't need to write those because those are somewhat mundane for the most part. I mean, you can write them if you feel like it. I actually saw one guy one time writing down all of his preflop cards, but nothing else. And I asked him what he does with that. He says, oh, I like to see what hands I had. But he doesn't know what hands he had. He, he just wrote down his preflop cards. That's totally irrelevant information. So make sure the information you're writing down is very useful. And useful information will look probably something like this, plus a, a few additional details, like maybe you know a specific read on this kid, or you know, you, maybe, maybe right, you've been super loose aggressive recently, so you should expect less credit or something like that. So what you do at the end of the day is you go through and find all the hands that are particularly interesting, that you have questions about, and you take the top of this page and you fold it down. Now you have a bunch of bookmarks throughout this page, or throughout this throughout this book, and you'll take those hands, maybe they'll be, for example, at the end of every day, I probably have, if I play poker for maybe 10 hours in a live tournament, I have maybe 20 hands that I think are interesting and noteworthy, and I'll go through there and try to make sure I didn't do anything absurd, make sure I feel like I played them well, and I'll talk to my friends about any of the hands that I have questions about. That's really the whole point of this, is to make it to where you can share your poker experience with your peers. And you can take these hands and post them on Float the Turn. You can, um, uh, we have poker forums on Fo Float the Turn for those who are not aware, and I try to answer all the questions that come up. You know, if you, if you guys post me a hand that looks exactly like this in a notebook, I'll, have, I'll know exactly what it means. So that might be super easy. Maybe that can become our new default hand posting method, the, the, note, the paper and pen method. So that's what I do with my hands. I, I talk to them, to my I talk with my friends about the hands usually at nighttime before we all go to sleep, and I think it helps everyone. And my friends often do the same thing. They tend to remember their hands, but they're not trying to run a poker training site, and they're they they you know a lot of people just don't take notes on their hands. But I definitely think if you are actively trying to get very good at poker, you need to remember what you're doing, and you need to be able to discuss what you're doing. And I think that this method is by far the easiest. Some people like using uh, an iPad or an iPhone to take notes, but I found that is so much more slow than using the paper and pen, mainly because in the paper and pen you can write down everything much quicker, and you can also flip back and reference other hands much quicker in the paper and pen method, at least in, in my experience. Something I do use an iPad for is, this is a totally different topic, but it is 
it does deal with note taking is I keep a note file of everyone I have played with whose name I know within reason. Players who I play with on a regular basis. So, for example, like Phil Ivey has a note in there, and it has notes on Phil Ivey, and Daniel Legrand is in there. I have notes on Daniel Legrand. And, you know, everyone I play with on a regular basis that I, that I know. And whenever I show up to a table to play with the players, what my, note, what my notebooks usually look like, instead of having a bunch of random descriptive things about the players, I'll have their names, assuming I know them. And I would guess that in America, I probably know something like a third or half of the players at my table every day. And I'll go through there, and I will read some of the specific hands that I played with them. Or not necessarily specific hands, but at least things that they did that I thought stood out in their overall game. Like, perhaps they bet small and they have the nuts, or they bet big when they have the nuts, or they get tilty if they lose two or three hands in a row, or they are seem to be immune to tilt, or whatever. So, I have a very big note file on all the players who I play with. And I, I think that's also very beneficial. You need to write down notes on your regular opponents. And I think pretty much everyone, if you play in a live card room, you do have regular opponents you play with on a regular basis. And if you are taking notes on them, you will be able to pull those notes up whenever you get to the table and sort of give yourself a little primer on how your opponents play. And that's going to be very beneficial as well. So that's it. That's all I, that's all I really do with my note-taking. And I use those notes to give you guys content for Float the Turn and for my webinars, for my books. Um, my books, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, Volume 3 in particular, where I have 150 hands, all of those hands came ex exactly from my notes. So I definitely think it's a good learning tool. I've been told that people love the book, and all it really is is just reading through my notes. So check that out if you have not. Um, and you can see the, the type of detail you can get just by thinking about a hand later in the day, and you can get a lot of clarity, because quite often you're at the table, you're not thinking 100% clearly. And there are often times when I'm sitting there at the poker table playing, and I'll play. I will have played a hand and, and thought that it was, you know, okay or slightly dicey. And then I'll get to my notes and I'll start writing the notes, and I'll be like, "Oh, this is nasty. You gotta, what was I doing? What was I thinking?" And you know, you can you can improve by just trying to recognize and find things that can make you better. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely post them in the Float the Turn forums, and I will be more than happy to answer them. This has been Jonathan Little for FloatTheTurn.com. Thanks for watching.